Pepper premiere. I would never tattoo my back with a poster of the cast. I would never go to the lengths that Twilight fans go to just to be noticed at red carpet premieres or just at an everyday theatrical release. I would never do it. I would never wear a Twilight shirt to a fucking premiere. I would never do the things that you guys do. And that's why I applaud your efforts to become noticed as a Twilight fan. And there are millions of you. I know that there were a lot of you that really didn't like my video blogs when the first Twilight film was released in 2008. I was the biggest critic uh, for Twilight films. Didn't support them. Didn't like them at all. Didn't understand the logic behind them and the logic between a teenage girl falling in love with a vampire, uh, which was very difficult for me to understand. For me, I would much rather uh, see a Twilight film based on you're a vampire, I'm a werewolf, and I'm going to kick your fucking ass. Now, I'm a teenage girl. I want you to have sex with me and fall in love with me. I want to see a film that's based on I'm a vampire, you're a werewolf, and I'm going to kick your ass. We don't see enough of that in Twilight. Maybe I'm saying that because I'm a guy and a biased son of a bitch, but that's what I want to see uh, with a Twilight film. I think that the emotion from the first Twilight took away from what it could have potentially been. There was too much emotion, not enough action, and I hope, I'm praying that the second part of Breaking Dawn picks up for Breaking Dawn Part 1 left off in the way that we get more action, we get more controversy, and the Twilight Saga goes out with a bang, not with an absolute bomb being dropped and the film being an absolute blowout. The film's not going to be a blowout. The film is going to achieve a lot of success and a lot of publicity, and I think it's because of the fan support. The fans of Twilight have been absolutely unbelievable. Over the last uh, half of a decade, Twilight has won more Teen Choice Awards than any film uh, over the last four and five years, they've won a total of anywhere from 45 to 47 uh, Teen Choice Awards. They won the Ultimate Fan Teen Choice Award uh, this year for the 2012 Teen Choice Awards. The cast members have achieved a lot of success outside of Twilight. Remember Me, Water for Elephants, and Snow White and the Huntsman, all available on Blu-ray and DVD, are pure exemplifications of the amount of success they've achieved outside of Twilight. But again, uh, something that you have to take into consideration is the fact that they have achieved the success outside of Twilight while the Twilight films still resonate and are still being produced. There is no guaranteed success for these characters outside of Twilight when the final Twilight film is finished playing theatrically. And that is where the Twilight cast members are headed down a road of very uncertain paths. I want to see them achieve just as much success as what's been said by entertainment news programs that the cast of Twilight would never have to do anything for the rest of their lives and they'd be set based on the success they've achieved from the Twilight films and all the success all of the films have had in their entirety. They've been very in-depth, very detailed, and the cast members have been very focused on making Twilight the most successful theatrical release of all time. It's not as big as Jaws, it's not as big as a Friday the 13th franchise or a Halloween franchise, it will never amount to that. But it definitely is a film franchise that has made a lot of history, and the film creators deserve a lot of credit for putting all the work and uh, attention on Twilight that they have over the last few years. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, they shot a couple of the Twilights in Canada, a beautiful place to shoot Twilight. The setting for uh, the Twilight films was ideal here in Canada. Uh, I believe they shot it actually in British Columbia, which was really, really cool, uh, seeing them shoot, shoot it here. and. The thing was, the first Twilight film looked like a film that was shot in about two and a half days. The thing that made up for it was the detailed script. Uh, there wasn't any, you know, graphical emphasis. Uh, there wasn't much uh, in the way of, you know, action in the first Twilight, really. Uh, really what made up for it was the detailed script and how big of words they use in the script, really. Uh, it looked like a film that was shot in about a day and a half to two days, anywhere within that deficit. But as films like New Moon and Eclipse and Breaking Down Part 1 were released years after, it seemed as if the detail in graphical presentation, more detailed scripts, and as you know, you went through the books, uh, the, the films got better. Uh, it was almost as if you know, anticipation and a climax was building from one film to another. And the cool thing about uh, the Twilight films and films of more recency are, when they're knowing of releasing a single, probably just a sequel just a year after, they leave so much out to keep you coming back to see the next part of the film. Um, and I hope that Twilight Breaking Down Part 2, be it this is the final Twilight film of the entire series, 
doesn't leave us with a lot of unanswered questions. You know, I hope that we don't get up and, and walk out of the theater saying to ourselves, what the fuck happens next? Uh, I want to have a point of finality where I know what happened to all the characters. I want to know uh, this film is going to achieve a lot of success. Uh, I want to know the answers to these questions that I've been wondering ever since Twilight Breaking Down Part 1. Uh, you know, was released, had been answered by the time Breaking Down Part 2 is over and done with. I mean, the fan support has been overwhelming, and I'm going to be honest with you, I've never seen anything in the way of fan support quite like this, and over the last five years, I have had a whole lot of fun talking about each Twilight film, from Twilight to New Moon to Eclipse to Breaking Down Part 1, and I hope that talking about Breaking Down Part 2 uh, is going to be just as enjoyable when the Blu-ray and DVD drops this February and over the next few weeks as we cover the release of the Twilight Breaking Down Part 2 film, which of course is the fifth and final film of the series. I'm anticipating it to be one of the biggest Twilight films of the previous four, and it has no reason not to be. One of the things that could contribute to the failure of the promotional tour is the scandal involving uh, Kirsten Stewart and the producer of Snow White and the Huntsman. Uh, I anticipated to make a video blog on the scandal, um, but the reason that I put it off for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and never got around to doing it was because I didn't know too much about it and was just briefly discussed on several entertainment news websites and just briefly discussed on entertainment news programs, so I kind of just put it off. I looked at it as an item that wasn't big enough to talk about or give any emphasy towards. Uh, it's kind of like how the Selena Gomez, Justin Bieber situation of their breakup has a lot of novelty. There isn't much detail released on it. Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber aren't saying much about the situation. So you kind of put those things off. Um, so with very little detail, I said to myself, you know, there are more important things going on in both the entertainment and sports world to talk about rather than some scandal involving a producer of a film that Kristen Stewart starred in, did a fantastic job with. Very different role from what I saw her in the Twilight films, and I enjoyed seeing her in that role, and I hope we see her in more theatrical releases to be released on Blu-ray and DVD in those kind of roles where her character really branches out from what it has been over the last five years in Twilight. Do I think films like Snow White and the Huntsman will give her more success uh, than the Twilight films? Absolutely not. I don't think that she'll achieve as much success as Twilight ever again in her career. I think that, you know, she should retire because she'll never achieve as much success as she did with Twilight. Uh, but she's not going to. She's going to continue to work in the entertainment world because that's all she's known her entire life, The Runaways. Uh, and other movies like Snow White and the Huntsman, a more recency, have, you know, kept her on the big screen. And I hope uh, that she continues to remain on the big screen. But I don't think she'll ever achieve as much success as she did with Twilight or any of the cast members from Twilight will achieve as much success. You cannot tell me that Taylor Lautner appearing in Valentine's Day gave him just as much success as the Twilight films did. And if you think that, you're an idiot. Because there's no way that those films that people like Taylor Lautner have been in will ever amount to the success of Twilight. It'll never happen. So I, I just am looking forward to really seeing them again on the big screen, but not in a role that's bigger than Twilight. Nothing can ever be as big uh, as Twilight. And this really... Uh, is what set this whole vampire werewolf craze into motion. That's why we're seeing vampires and werewolves emphasized on uh, at so many award shows and continuing to be emphasized on and made fun of in parodies for music videos, television shows, and movies that are being released theatrically that are kind of spin-offs of the original Twilight films. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the inspiration for the Vampire Diaries, for example, came from the success of Twilight. The inspiration for networks like Much Music and MTV to rehabilitate uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was from Twilight. It was because of the success of these films that we have seen so much emphasis on vampires and werewolves. Do I like uh, and approve of vampires and werewolves receiving so much emphasis? No, I don't. I don't want to see vampires and werewolves shoves in our faces 24 hours a day when it's not even fucking Halloween. Seeing it on Halloween is one thing, but seeing it 360 days over 365 day a year with the exception of fucking Christmas, which oftentimes isn't made an exception for, people are still watching vampire and werewolf movies at Christmas. Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's just atrocious. I don't want to see that all the time. I don't want to see so much emphasis on vampires and werewolves, but it's going to continue to happen because Twilight fans are still going to be remain crazy over Twilight long after the films have finished up, and television networks are going to have to do something to increase their ratings, so they're going to show a lot of vampire and werewolf-oriented programming 
to keep their ratings at an all-time high. No matter if they have to show 500 reruns, they'll do it. 500 reruns of Buffy, 500 reruns of The Vampire Diaries. I just don't like the amount of emphasis we're seeing on vampires and werewolves because I don't think that's the way the economy should be raised on. I don't think that's the way that um, you know social media should conduct itself with 500 to 600 conversations that are taking place on a daily basis uh, being about you know vampires and werewolves. It's, it's just pathetic. Really, it's just a stupid excuse to get up every day and log on social media websites. Talk about vampires and werewolves for a fucking hour. You know, it's alright if it's Halloween, you know, for, and you talk about it for two or three weeks leading up to Halloween in anticipation of it. But not when, you know, you're two weeks out from Christmas and you're talking about vampires and werewolves and you have fucking vampire fangs shoving, uh, you know, I can go on for hours and hours and hours. But, you know, definitely, you know, I said this earlier in the show about how Twilight has changed the complexion in the entertainment world, uh, and it truly has. Uh, and I can never give that film enough credit for changing the complexion of the entertainment world in the ways that it has. And I really look forward to finding out what kind of success the cast members of Twilight are going to achieve. Uh, in relation to the scandal involving uh, Robert Paxton, Kirsten Stewart, and the producer of Snow White and the Huntsman, very little detail was released on this. I know there was a tweet uh, sent out from the producer's Twitter account of Snow White and the Huntsman in relation to that. And the tweet was probably about two sentences in length. I didn't catch what the tweet said, but apparently what the tweet said from some of the reports that I've read uh, is that there wasn't much that happened on the set of Snow White and the Huntsman between Kirsten Stewart and the producer. But any idiot knows that enough happened on the set of Snow White and the Huntsman for so much skepticism and speculation to arise from what happened. And we know enough happened to separate Kirsten Stewart and uh, Robert Pattinson from their real-life relationship because in Breaking Down Part 2, I can goddamn well bet uh, everything that I have on the emotion really not being there between Robert Pattinson and Kirsten Stewart. If anything, you'll get emotion from the amount of money that are in their contracts. You won't get emotion based on real-life feelings uh, with this film, and that's really going to suck for fans who are die-hard fans of Twilight and I really feel for you because you saw emotion in Twilight and New Moon that you will not see with the final Twilight film. I think that kind of emotion should be there. I don't want